here's our differential pressure transmitter it has the hp side and the lp side this is how it gets connected to the tank so the hp side as the name suggests would be connected to the side where there is the highest pressure and the lp side here is kept open to atmosphere because this is an open tank had this been a closed tank the lp side would have been connected to the top of the tank this configuration that we are going to use is called as dry leg configuration. Here, if you see the transmitter output, it's always the difference between the HP side and the LP side. Thus, the name suggests differential pressure transmitter. So, it gives the difference between the HP side and the LP side. Now, we'll look into what is the equation that we can use to calculate pressure. So, here we'll take the equation as follows pressure is equal to height into specific gravity now here if you would notice the pressure is in inches of h2o and the height is in inches and the specific gravity is a unitless quantity so basically specific gravity in simple words is density of a substance compared to that of water now this multiplied by your inches would give you pressure in inches of h2 had our height been in mm then the output would have been in mm h2 so this is how we derive the pressure unit now here in this example in order to calibrate a transmitter we need two conditions the first condition is called as the lrv case where the tank is empty so what should the transmitter give when the tank is empty? 4 milliamperes. So whatever is our LRV, that means what is the lower range that we want to measure. So in our case, we'll keep when the tank is completely empty. Now, what if the tank gets completely full? So when the tank gets completely full, we'll call this to be URV, our upper range value case. And in this case, we would want the transmitter to give 20 milliamperes at URV. So this is our calibration range that we want to calibrate the transmitter for. Now let's look at the LRV case when the tank is empty. Here we know the transmitter output is HP minus LP. So what we'll do is first we'll try to calculate what is the pressure which is exerted on the HP side when the tank is empty. So since the tank is open to atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure would only be acting on it. On the LP side also, it is just open to atmosphere, so atmospheric pressure is acting on it. So basically, both the sides just atmospheric pressure is acting. So the transmitter output is basically zero inches of H2. There is no head pressure of water or any other liquid acting on it. Even though the height is 1000 inches, the C to C distance, it will make no difference because there is no liquid in the tank. So no head would be acting on the HP side, a very simple case. Now let's look at the URV case when the tank is full. So here the tank is now filled with our liquid. Then we need to first calculate the pressure at the HP tapping. So let us see what is the pressure at HP tapping of the tank. Here, if you would notice, we knew the equation was height into specific gravity. So the height here is 1000 inches. So let's imagine the C to C distance is 1000 inches. And the specific gravity of the liquid is 0.5. So we get as 1000 multiplied by 0.5. The answer is 500 inches of H2. So basically the pressure at HP side would be 500 inches of H2. Now this concept sometimes gets ignored that when the tank is open, there is one more thing acting on it, which is the atmospheric pressure. So the pressure at HP side is 500 inches of H2O due to the liquid plus atmospheric pressure. So this is when we have calculated the pressure at the HP side. Now we look at when the tank is full and what is the pressure at the low pressure side that is LP side. So the pressure on LP tapping is nothing but atmospheric pressure. Why? Because we have kept it open to the atmosphere. So this side is going to be only atmospheric pressure acting to it. Had it been a closed tank, then whatever was the pressure above the tank, that pressure would have been acting on the LP side. So basically the LP side can then nullify with the HP side. 
Now you would recall that we had learned that the transmitter output is basically the difference between HP and LP. So for this tank full case, we'll try to subtract the HP and the LP and see what is the output. But before that, if you're liking these videos, then please consider to subscribe the channel and especially press the bell icon. So every Saturday you receive a new educational video. Thank you. So now we'll try to calculate the output when the tank is full. So the transmitter output is basically HP minus LP. So HP as we had calculated before was 500 inches of H2O plus atmospheric pressure. And with respect to LP we had learned because it's open to atmosphere it was atmospheric pressure. So the difference is going to be HP minus LP so the atmospheric pressure gets cancelled. So the transmitter output is going to be 500 inches of H2O when the tank is full. This seems to be a simple case. Now if we look at something where the transmitter location might not be able to be kept exactly where we want to measure the pressure. So we have to shift the transmitter somewhere. For such cases, we look forward as to what has to be the calculations that we have to follow when the transmitter is not at its exact location where it needs to measure pressure. But before that, just let's quickly revise what we had learned for the simple open tank case. Here, the LRV, which was at 4 milliamperes, the transmitter output would be 0 inches. Because now you'll be able to compare with the next case that we're going to take that what is the difference when we change the location of the transmitter. But here, since the transmitter is exactly at the location where you want to measure the pressure, the transmitter output is going to be 0 inches of H2O. In case of dry leg configuration, and URV is going to be 20 milliamperes when the transmitter output is 50 inches of H2O. Now here's the case where the transmitter is not at the exact location of tapping because it might not be feasible all the time to keep the transmitter at exactly that location where the tank is placed. So for such cases, imagine that our tank was full and later it is emptied. So the pipe which is connecting the HP up till the transmitter is still full. So this will assume it to be 10 inches. Now here what happens is We'll assume the uh, older height of 1000 inches for the tank C2C and let's calculate the pressure at the HP side. You would notice that the pressure on the HP tapping as we had discussed was the same formula height into specific gravity. Let's keep the same fill fluid which is there for the tank. So basically it's first is the pressure which is exerted by the tank and second would be the pressure which is exerted by the transmitter location. So since for the tank there is nothing kept inside of it, there is no liquid, we'll multiply the 1000 inches into 0 plus the pressure located by transmitter would be 10 into 0.5 and let's see what happens. So the pressure at HP side is 0 inches of H2O plus the top which is 5 inches of H2O because of transmitter location and let's not forget the final one the atmospheric pressure acting to it. Whereas on the pressure at LP side would be basically atmospheric pressure which is acting to it. So the final output is going to be 4 mil at 4 milliamperes it is going to be 5 inches of H2. This is the case because the atmospheric pressure gets cancelled and the only one which remains is 5 inches of H2 between HP and LP. So you've noticed that even though there is no liquid filled in the tank, yet your transmitter is going to show some inches of H2. So had you calibrated the transmitter that for 0 inches of H2 I need 4 milliamperes, it would be an incorrect reading. So cases when the transmitter is moved below the tapping, we need to compensate for this particular water head or the liquid head that acts on the transmitter. This is the same case with the tank now being full. So for such case, let's take the measurements that we had done before. This height is going to be 10 inches and this height is going to be 1000 inches. So basically our C2C distance is 1000 inches and now our transmitter is located 10 inches below just like before. So let's see now what output do we get. So for this, the same specific gravity which is 0.5 is what we'll be using.
let's go ahead and see the pressure at the HP side first so the pressure at HP side is going to be as follows height into specific gravity so the pressure exerted by the liquid in the tank is going to be 1000 inches into 0 0.5 which is specific gravity so this is the pressure exerted by the tank or the fluid inside the tank now the next one which is going to add here is going to be 10 into 0 0.5 this is because of the transmitter being located below so the head that is acting on the transmitter because of transmitter location when we add the two up we will get is 500 inches of h2o plus 5 inches of h2o plus the atmospheric pressure that is acting on top of it so the pressure at hp side is going to be 505 inches of h2o plus atmospheric pressure and the pressure at lp side since it is open to atmosphere it is only going to be atmospheric pressure so basically this atmospheric pressure gets cancelled and the final output that we are going to get is 505 inches of h2o So you would have noticed that 505 inches of H2O already compensates for that 10 inches of the transmitter being located below. So did you notice that here in this case even if a tank specific gravity with the height is going to give us only 500 inches of H2O our transmitter must show 505 inches of H2O to compensate for transmitter location. Now, one more thing is that there are more complex level calculations than this. For example, there's wet leg configuration, there's interface level measurement. So basically, there are two liquids and we need to measure the interface between them, like example, oil and water, etc. Then you also have the diaphragm seal cases for level calculation. So when you use a diaphragm seal, a different specific gravity would be there for the diaphragm seal fill fluid as compared to your fill fluid, which is used in the tank. Also, there's another case where we have to measure density using DP. Yes, it's possible to even measure density of a substance with the help of measuring the pressure. So if you would like that you would want videos on these particular topics, then please tell in the comment section so I'll know that you people are interested for such topics and I'll try to make the time out to make videos on these topics. Also, if you're finding these videos useful, then please subscribe and especially press the bell icon. So every Saturday when I produce a new video, you will be able to get it at the first instance, be it these complex level calculations, control valve calculations, etc. Also, I would like to uh, share one more thing with you. Here's a free ebook on engineering standards, on PIP instrumentation standards. I feel that these are one of the most simplest standards that an engineer can start with. These are simple, easy and only 5 to 10 pages usually in their size. So it's easy to digest the information that is within these standards. And there have been almost 1500 plus engineers who found this book ebook valuable. Uh, example is from people from Shell, Dow, DuPont, TechNip, etc. The link is given in the description below. So this would help you to act as a guide as to which PIP standard is to be referred, how to refer these standards, what is inside these standards. And I think this video can be valuable to you. Thank you so much. And please let me know what other videos you would want on which other topics. And you can contact me via my blog and asarshek.com or on my LinkedIn page or in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching the video.